Welcome to The Silburn Show. And my guest today, our dynamic and entrepreneurial duo, coming up next on The Silburn Show. The world of work is changing with significant implications for women on one hand, technological advances and globalization being unprecedented opportunities for those who can access them. On the other hand, there is growing informality of labor, income inequality and humanitarian crisis. Against this backdrop, only 50% of working age women are represented in the labor force globally, compared to 76% of men. What's more, an overwhelming majority of women are in the informal economy subsidizing care and domestic work and concentrating in lower paid, lower skill occupations with little or no social protection. Achieving gender inequality in the world of work is imperative for sustainable development. I'm sure you agree. The United Nations observance on 8th of March call upon all actors to step it up for gender equality towards a planet 50-50 by 2030 by ensuring that the world of work works for all women. Each one of us, women and men, can be a leader within our own spheres of influence by taking bold, pragmatic action. Through purposeful collaboration, we can help women advance and unleash the limitless potential offered to economies the world over. But then, this is it, a right-wing politician, Polish, uh, Polish MEP Janos Koren Mike, provoked a furious response after saying women should earn less money than men because they are weaker, smaller and less intelligent when speaking to a near European um, Parliament during a gender pay gap debate. Are they not getting it that we're all equal? Are we not? Now what are women saying? I think we have breakthrough. Share your comments below or on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag Silburn TV. Joining us today we have the founders of award-winning extension brand Hair ID entrepreneurs who represent female empowerment and driving development. Not stopping there, they have <coughs> the founders of Hustle & Heal Ladies Lunch, a networking platform that seeks to bring together like-minded individual entrepreneurs and professionals to connect with key industry leaders. I'd like to welcome Jen Scott and JTAB to the show. Ladies, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank Are you for having heels? us. Yes. Yeah. Hustles. Of course. <laughs> when I was thinking about this show today, I was saying to myself, you guys are on the threshold of history, right? Because I said to myself that I have to start a show with a business element. Okay. Mm. And why not start it on the eve of the second anniversary of the Silburn Show? Ah, so today, congratulations. today, I'm going to ask you definitely to say, ladies and gentlemen, this is the best show. Steve Harvey, <laughs> move of course. Or yeah. Opera. <laughs> Get in line, <laughs> or something like that. But, but I was just thinking about that because I believe that we are on the threshold of something very powerful, mm, yeah. especially with the black element, which I'll explain a bit later. Now, how did you both meet, Jen and Jay? Jen and Jay. <laughs> Anton yes. Day, Jen and Jay. Yeah. Yeah. So we met at um, an extracurriculum activity for children when we were in primary school mm -hmm. um, or secondary school, maybe the beginning of secondary school. Yeah. yeah. It was for outstanding students that yeah. were performing well, um, probably above the average, and we both went there. So we went to schools in the same borough, but different schools, mm. and we met at that. It was called the Windsor Fellowship yeah. Scheme. And Did you say Windsor? Windsor, Windsor Fellowship, Fellowship. Okay. yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And that's where it all began, really. Mm. We just clicked then and... The friendship grew. We were at separate schools, so we yeah. spent some time apart as well. Mm -hmm. And then we found ourselves at college together, okay. and um, we naturally came back together. And oh, like 10 years ago or so? Yeah. yeah. yeah 10 years about ago. About 10 years. Bit, bit more, but <laughs> <laughs> we're sick <of> 10. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's where it all began. Mm. And that's your perception also, Jen? Of, yeah, 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 no, she's not lying. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we definitely, you know, college was, um, you know, we're, we really solidified the, the friendship. Um, we went to separate universities. I mm. went to Brunel, Jay went to Kingston. Okay. Um, and, yeah, we just kept close throughout there our families are basically one mm -hmm. family now our parents know each other yeah. um you know it's it's more family than yeah, a yeah. friendship um, but what would, what would you say was the key factor the key bond that sort of kept you together over all these years with even the slight separation at the same time what was a key clicking factor that both of you 
gelled? I think thing? we are just, we're very similar, but we're not. And in the things that we are similar in, um, in terms of just wanting, um, you know, being very ambitious, yes. um, being very progressive, being very, um, you know, wanting to inspire, motivate mm -hmm. and empower people. That's something that we share. So it's those similarities that we have that, yes. you know, you know, common between us and that just sort of work. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, sort of manifested into two businesses that we have and it just works well and our personalities as a result gel well and, you know, we both have our roles in one of those businesses. And we'll come to the two businesses a bit later, mm. definitely. Yes, yeah, so I think our backgrounds in terms of the way that we were raised as well, mm. our family have very similar values. Mm -hmm. We, um, you know, we grew up in similar households. And so although we weren't together for, a, you know, long periods of time, mm -hmm. we still worked off of the same sort of moral compass. We both were aligned in our thought process. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. think that's really had a lot to do with us gelling and working well together mm -hmm. and becoming friends, sisters, mm. and as Jen said, our families as well, as a result, yeah. have bonded. Yeah. And I think that's, that's really important, mm. that foundation. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons why I'm sort of digging into this, because foundations are so crucial and important. And when you mention about families together, who made the link with the families? Were the families known together, or was it yourselves who created that link with the families? It was us. Yeah, it was, it us. was us. Our it families didn't know each other. Yeah. Um, but as I said, because we met at a young mm. age, mm. we had to do things and go to ceremonies where our parents would have Me, to take yeah. us. Yes. And so they became familiar in that sense. And, um, you know, a lot of the time that we spend socially is around our families. Mm. And yes. so it was always, OK, well, if Jen's having something at her house, mm -hmm. then her parents would say, oh, why don't you invite your mum mm. or your dad? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, they've developed their own independent yeah. friendships from that mm -hmm. as well. We're in... Uh, a small community where you know we're able to stick together we mm -hmm. live within close proximity as well so it's all very it's very organic it's very natural it's not hard it's, yeah. it's easy, it's easy yeah. and, and Jen what, what's the background the cultural background is it is so it? I'm from the West Indies yeah. my dad's from Barbados and my mum's from Anguilla and St Kitts okay not a small oh. island. No, <laughs> very just, big. just making that very clear. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, both my parents are from Jamaica okay not a small island. Not a small island. We're all together in this together. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're all yeah. from, I'm the from Caribbean. Jamaica. Though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, how do you guys with this mission? Because it seemed like somehow when you all met and together at that time, was there like a sort of clicking mindset that you're going to be doing things together in the future? Was there like that sort of energy or it just happened? Um, you're nodding, but I would actually, initially, I don't think we knew. Not at all. Yeah. Um, I'm nodding to the, com the question. Like, oh, okay. Good, good, good question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, at first, it was just, you know, <coughs> this is my friend, you know, yeah. and, and we, we're we so similar, so it makes sense. The friendship makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, my cousin and Jay's cousin, you know, they were best friends at the time as well, you know, two guys. So, mm. we were just always around each other, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and it just made sense, and you know, just through school and through university. And as Jay said, you know, the family mm. parties and just socially being around each other, it it was only right. It yeah. was just kind of like a natural progression to happen. Yeah. I think, you know, when you say what made it click, it, for us, it's just always been so natural and it's always been what it is. It wasn't, I don't think, ever a turning point when we were like, yeah. <coughs> So you sort of walked into it. Yeah. Also. So therefore, so, so how did Hair ID I mean, I feel a bit discriminated on because, <laughs> as you can see, I can't benefit Listen, from here. Listen, in 2017, you know you'll be surprised. This is all inclusive. Really? There are men yes. wearing wigs, wigs, wearing extensions. You were born like yes, myself? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Wow, man, I made it. <laughs> my, my little daughter, she's five. She said, Daddy, can you grow hair? Oh, and I really? said, I said, I can grow beer. Yeah. You know? But yeah, tell me about Hair ID. So Hair ID was born out of necessity. Mm. We graduated from uni in the height of the recession. And mm -hmm. so it was really being creative yeah. with exactly do what you can with what you have where you yeah. are like we had <laughs> nothing we mm -hmm. were searching for ideas on how to make money mm -hmm. how to um you know have that stream of income that independence that yes. we wanted mm -hmm. at that time being faced with no jobs mm -hmm. um you know leaving university at it was just a terrible time yeah. for the graduates. So and the recession period was what, like, this period on? Yeah, one of the definitely, factors yeah. definitely. Yeah, I mean, I definitely remember thinking, 
okay, I've, I've graduated, I've not got a job. Um, first summer, there's no way I'm going to be broke. Yeah. And it was just like, right, we have to get real creative quick yes. and make something happen. Um, and it was, there was three of us initially, mm -hmm. and um, it was just like, we're going to do a one day hair salon. I don't even know why it was hair. Mm. I, it was just something. It was because we knew that we needed to sell something with integrity, something mm. that we actually yeah. knew about. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. didn't want to cheat ourselves mm. or other people mm. trying to by sell just, them by something. Just that, doing something yeah. for the sake of yeah. making yeah. money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, making money was the aim, yeah. but we still wanted to do it in a field which we knew about and which yeah. we had that passion, passion about, about. Yeah. Yeah. Which you so enjoy. it was a natural mm. yeah, yeah it was yeah. a natural decision really yeah. and um, I think as well at the time we didn't necessarily realize but we we were on the cusp of something in mm. terms of recognizing that niche in the market and mm -hmm. recognizing that we had done a lot of mm. the research already without yeah. already knowing it. Yeah. Would you yeah. Agree? So you lived yeah. it. In a way, you're, you're living it to some extent. Definitely. The research or rather. Yeah, I mean, in terms of we our, our first jobs, um, which we haven't said, were both uh, were in hairdressers. Yeah. And, um, you know, that was the Saturday job. So we were surrounded and, you know, immersed in that anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, growing up, you always want to look good. You know, your hair is a big part of that. Um, and, you know, that the you that you put out. So, you know, we were very much aware of yeah. our hair and yeah. that the part that that played. So, yeah. yes, in terms of the research and knowing what looks good and what didn't work and the different qualities and types of hair extensions to add the length and the volume, we were, mm -hmm. you know, very aware of that without realising. So when it came to the, um, you know, graduating uni, it was just like, okay, well, this is something we can do, it makes sense, mm -hmm. let's go for it. And at the time, 2009, no one else was really doing you know, doing it. Then I mean, there was, yeah. you know, you had the Asian uh, men selling us our own hair, um, you know, and our own textures and things like that. But in terms of um, the users themselves mm -hmm. taking hold, going out, finding suppliers mm -hmm. themselves and saying, okay, this is a product that I've got and I'm going to sell. Mm -hmm. No one was really doing that at the time. So it was a little bit risky, but something yeah. we thought, okay, it was a one day sell. It was. It, you know, we did actually set up the business straight away. Yes. It was like, we're going to do this one day sell, make loads of money and we're going to enjoy summer. So, so tell me now, you mentioned the Asian factor mm -hmm. there because I've had a couple of different person on the show in here. And how do you perceive that today and then? Is it getting better with the competition or what? Um, is I think, it a competition or what? I, I, th I think in business there is no competition. There's there is enough, no competition. There's no competition. The, the market out there is big enough for yes. people to carve out their niche, do what they need to do, and mm. for people to identify with that and tap into that. Right. So as long as you're able to do that, then you know there's no competition because yeah. you can't compete with something that's not on a par with you. Yeah. First, of, first of all, in terms of whether the situation is still the same. Mm -hmm. um, it is, but it's changing. Yes. You, um, you know, you said we're on the threshold of something now, mm. and I think I agree. We are. We are coming into an age. Black people. Black people are very entrepreneurial, yes. and they're recognising that you know we can supply that need that we yes. have, regardless of whether it's food, um, hair, cosmetics, beauty. There's a real awakening mm. in terms of what it is that we need and how we can go about supplying that for ourselves. And so mm. I think whilst the Asian market is still there in terms of supplying, um, you know, and meeting that need of the black community, we yeah. as um, black people are also recognising, hold on, we can do this ourselves. Mm. We, can, we yeah. can be there. But I don't think financially we're there in terms of the, the, the scale of the scale things. Of mm. I, I had a discussion sometime with someone and they said that the Asian market is there because they provide the hairs initially. Mm. Okay. To mm -hmm. a certain extent. This is sure. just a discussion. Mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. you know, I think Chris Rock did a show one time yes, and they went there and showed different hairs and people were selling hairs and all mm -hmm. those sort of things. So it's like they somehow are the where the supply comes from, mm -hmm, sure. to a certain extent. So therefore, it's like they feel like this market belongs to them. Mm. But at the same time, their majority of their customers mm, sure. are black people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Am I correct there? Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. So therefore, how does one then bridge that gap then between the suppliers mm -hmm. and the consumers? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it is deemed that we consume a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do. We I do. think um, as a consumer... Sorry, I, I threw you off. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I think as a consumer, 
I know for myself, if mm. I put myself in that position as a consumer, I want to have everything. I don't want to just have the product. I want yes. to know about the background. I want to know, have the knowledge about yes. it as well and have that awareness so that I really understand exactly what the product does, how mm -hmm. I can make it work, how I can get the most out of it and make yes. it perform to, you know, to its best ability and I think if you're not a consumer of something yourself you're mm. not able to do that and you're yes. not able to convey okay this is what might happen if you use the product in this environment mm -hmm. and this is because you don't you haven't got that experience of it yes. and so I think there isn't a bridge to gap. Mm. So so Jay, Jen and I'm gonna bring this one to you now I, I see you are a strong person strong mm -hmm. character yeah and uh Yet at the same time, you gel over the years. Mm -hmm. How do you compromise then ideas or different views at times mm -hmm. to bring into giving one way forward? She's going that way, you're going that way. How do you deal with that? I think it's about a level of respect and understanding mm -hmm. that um, this is what you're good at and this is what I'm good at. Yeah. And just staying in your lane and owning that and mastering that. Um, and that's what works and that's what will continue to work for us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense me trying to um, go through a contract that yes. we've got or, you know, making sense of, you know, whatever yes. deal, potential deal we have on the table in terms of, you know, like the contract size of it, because that's what Jay mm. does. Mm. Um, and, and similarly with me, in terms of being the more creative one, um, you know, in sort of designing, you know, yes. from the websites, I've designed the websites in terms of the, um, the brand itself mm. um, and the creative side of the business. Mm. Um, that's just what I do. So for well. the benefit of the, of the viewers, then, mm -hmm. you are the creative element. Yeah. And you are the business legal, sure. you are a corporate sure. lawyer yes. by profession. Yes. And uh, are you still in that profession? Yes. You see, you see, working with that I as do, well. I do. But at the same time, this is your baby. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Ah, that, that's great. Now, with young people looking in now, and, and I'm just deviating a bit now, the hustle and heels. Even though I just felt, is that one of the reasons what created that? So you can impart mm. your journey mm -hmm. to empower other people as well. Yeah, and that's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. um, in 2009, <clears throat> we set up our business. We left university. Um, our parents and you know our peers around us were like mm. you know you go to university you get a good job you work way up and that's it mm. um, so for us to go against the grain in that way and say okay we well, actually know we're going to start our own business and build something of our own mm. it was just like whoa are you sure <laughs> bearing yeah. in mind it's a recession right now yeah. like you're safer doing what everyone else is going to be doing yeah. so tell me now what attribute to the success of hair id I think... Is it successful, is it? <laughs> yes. I mean, right. we, we, sure, we, right? <laughs> we, 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 we <laughs> like that, is it? Um, it's us, essentially. Yeah. We are the ones that put in the hard work. We yes. are the ones that do the research. We mm. are the ones that present and package the brand and position it in the way we have. Mm. We are, you know, the two people that make Hair ID what it is. Yes. Um, you know, there are so many other hair brands out there. As a customer, I often say I would be confused. Mm. But in terms of, um, you know, really carving out our own niche in yes. the market, that's down to us. And the success of the brand is because of who we are. And as a result of that, we are now um, stepping out from behind the brand a bit more and yeah. showing people who we are, who... Um, the face. The face, mm -hmm. you know, of that. And, um, you know, because I think people buy from people. And yes. I know people buy from people. And, yes. you know, in a market that is so saturated, um, you've got this brand and that brand. Mm -hmm. You know, you really have to stand out and be different. And we have been because of us. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just really about putting a face Before on I take a quick break and talk about hustle and heels later, Hair ID, the name, how did that come? To? Hair with the I and <laughs> the D. What was I thinking? Because a lot of people watching now, and listen, we're in a world now where it is so saturated, as mm -hmm. you said, mm -hmm. but also they realize in the 95 doesn't have washed anymore, mm -hmm. where people will say, get a 95 job, go to university and get a pension. That's not happening anymore. Mm -hmm. So everybody's now hungry. They're looking for some gem. Mm. Yeah. What was it that made Hair ID that unique name that nobody else had? It was, the business was hair. Yeah. The, yes. That's what it was. Yeah. And for me, the ID part was that your hair is a huge part of your identity. Yeah. Mm. It makes you who you are. It is your ID. Mm. So, um, you know, when you look at someone, when you meet someone mm. for the first time, yeah. your hair, um, or their hair rather makes up a huge percent of 
the percentage of them as a you know an individual person so it's very yeah. personal it's very um unique and individual to different people right. and that's really where the element that's powerful it's a lot to do with identity yeah it is definitely wow. so you consider that it's knowing your identity yeah through well, your hair. well a lot of people do identify with who they are through their hair. Their hair gives them a certain confidence. It gives them a certain, um, you know, a certain feeling. Hair. Yeah. Really Sorry, I'm giggling because <laughs> I can't have that. You know what I mean? Am I going to lose out? <laughs> <laughs> but equally, <laughs> equally, I mean, that, that, you your know, your bald head is you. Yeah, My bald is you. Exactly, okay. and that <laughs> gives you your identity. Yeah. And so, as Jen said, that ID is just that reflection mm. of your identity, your personality. Yeah. Who you are. We're going to talk about hustle. Okay. Now, hustle and heels, mm. lunch. Sure. Right. So it's about a big lunch. Tell us about hustle and heels, lunch. And but what I find very interesting was the journey from going together, traveling together. This journey, going to university, starting hair ID. It's like you want to give back. Mm. Sure. And is that what hustle and heels about? But you explain what yeah. hustle and heels about. Hi, ladies. I'm Jay. Jay Tav. And I'm Jen Scott. And we are the founders of the Hustling Heels Ladies Bunches. <laughs> Do you want to go, go for it? Yeah. Hustling Heels is definitely about opening up about business to other women. We are in an age now where people are really wanting to take that independence for mm. themselves, but they don't necessarily know how to do it. They don't know where to go. Yeah. They, they just know that the end product looks like this and that's mm. where they want to get to, but they don't know how to go through the journey. And our business background, we had that experience. Yeah. And so for us, it was very much about helping other people to cut out some of the mistakes, yes. cut out some of the, you know, not a shortcut, because there's no shortcut to, mm. to any end in, but really in enlightening people, empowering mm. them, and giving them that knowledge that's really needed in order to succeed in business, and to enjoy it as yeah. well, mm. and not to feel like there's one way of doing something, but to open them up to that creativity that they can really okay. tap into. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the journey, just to take it back a bit, in terms of setting up Hustle and Heels, it was, like you said, very mm. much our way of giving back. Mm. And um, that really started from ourselves going against the yeah. grain, um, you know, graduating in a recession, you know, people always like, you go to university, you get a good job, you work mm. way up, and that's your career for mm. life. And in a recession to turn around and say, actually, no, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to set up my own business. Mm. You know, it was kind of like a huge thing at yeah. the time for everyone. and. Doing that and persisting and building Hair ID, yeah. we got a lot of questions and you know a lot of people asking, well, how are you doing this? This is so amazing. How can I learn? And you know what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. And it was really about providing a platform and a way to give back yes. um, in a way that was most efficient. Because you know when you're trying to run a yeah. business, constantly being bombarded with questions mm -hmm. about how I can do this and this, it does get time consuming. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we're very passionate about helping and empowering people. So Hudson Hills was built out of um, you know wanting to provide a platform for women to come together yes. in an environment and a space where they are comfortable, uh, they are able to relax outside of the corporate yeah. environment, yeah. Um, and we are then able to share. That's very interesting that you knowledge. said, um, us and the eels empower women mm. and stuff like that. But I'm going to show a clip here now because I'm seeing a man who actually saying he's at Hustle and Heels. Let's watch it for a second. Okay. Happy birthday, Hustle and Hills. It's been an amazing experience. You guys deserve all the success that you have already got. Please don't ever stop. Most of these events are purely for women, uh, women oriented, but as a man, it's been a great experience for me to attend one of these events. So many more to come, and yeah, happy birthday again. But... Now, I saw a man, so what was a man doing there? Well, we recognise that the male voice is very important yeah. and there's so much for us to learn from men mm -hmm. and the way that they operate in business. Yeah. I mean, just because we do have that platform and it is exclusively for women, yeah. that's not to say that the man's opinion and the male perspective on things yeah. isn't mm -hmm. valued. Yeah. And so we do have uh, lunches where every now and then we invite men along. Oh, so they have to be invited to be in that zone. Yeah, I mean, secure to a certain yeah, home. Exactly. <laughs> Stay quiet. Depends, Don't move. Depends, yeah. <laughs> no, so we do on occasion open it up to men mm -hmm. and to bring men in and to include them in that conversation mm -hmm. as well because I think there's so much to learn from men as well. well we're going to take a quick break and come back to understand the journey into these ladies hustling. Hustling? Guys, hustling? See you later. <laughs> 
you know, that's a reflection mm. of the male um, rhetoric and it's not mm. fair, it's not fair to mm. make it seem as though that's the view of men because yes. it, it's such an age, such an historic... Mm. It's from Jurassic Park, yeah, as, exactly. as yeah. you're saying, it's, it's from Jurassic Park. Yeah. yeah. We need to be sat at, you know, the table, we need mm. to put our voice forward. Um, these women, we are here, we are very much there. Well, if you weren't here, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, we are there. It's not like you've got to go out and create this new... Mm. Um, <laughs> you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 like, we are here. Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like, and don't forget to comment, but first subscribe. I'm Jen Scott. And I'm Jay Tav. And today we have been here on the amazing Silbon Show. It's great. Make sure that you like, subscribe, follow, do everything you can on social media and follow the Silbon Show. You know, I've forgotten the question, but are we going to stop <laughs> and cut this part? <laughs> 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 okay, good.